Hello everybody. Welcome to a very interesting and important video on the topic Financial Analyst Interview Questions and Answers from Career Right. In today's video, we'll see questions based on 11 very important concepts that are frequently asked to the aspiring financial analyst during the interview. More than providing the textbook answers to these questions, we'll delve deeper and dissect them to understand the real world implications of all those concepts. You'll find questions about balance sheet, income statement, negative cash flow, accounts receivable, liquidity, solvency, EBITDA, ratios, etc. But more than anything else, we'll see what should different values of these ratios indicate to you as a financial analyst. This insightful understanding of things is what interviewers actually seek in a candidate. Every single word of this video will add value to you in terms of knowledge and practical insight. Take a notepad and a pen so that you can keep taking down the important things as we go along. Ready? Great. Let's start. Question number one. How do the balance sheet and the income statement differ from each other? What does each of them tell you about a company's financial position? Now see, this is a very basic question which you must expect at every interview you face. My suggestion to you here is don't go after explaining the balance sheet or the income statement in detail because that is not what the interviewers are actually looking for. Just get to the point straight away and say a balance sheet reports a company's financial health based on its assets, liabilities and equity at a given point of time. Here assets include everything that the company owns like cash, property, equipment, inventory etc. Liabilities include everything the company owes, like debts, loans, outstanding payments, etc. And equity is the residual interest of its owners. Now, on the other hand, the PLN statement or the income statement, which reports revenues and expenses, showcases the company's performance over a specific period of time, like a quarter or a year. So, while the balance sheet shows the, what the company owns, the income statement shows how it performed. Investors scrutinize the balance sheet to understand the management's competitiveness in utilizing its resources and generating the revenue. It tells whether the company has sufficient assets to meet its liabilities in the short term and the long term. PNL statement tells about its ability to generate profits and control operational expenses. While the balance sheet gives the static picture, PNL statement or the income statement shows the dynamic picture. Okay. Now the next important statement here is the cash flow statement. So you must expect at least one question on this also. And so our question number two is based on cash flow statement. Let's see what it is. Question number two. What is cash flow statement? Why is it important for assessing a company's liquidity and cash management? Now, to answer this question, you can say, well, as the name implies, cash flow statement shows a detailed account of input and output movement of cash in a company. By tracking the sources and uses of cash, the company gets to understand how it manages its liquidity. The cash movements are categorized into operations, investing and financing. The operating cash flow section of the statement indicates if the company is generating sufficient cash from its operations to maintain and expand the business. A positive cash flow indicates that the company is generating sufficient money to sustain and expand the business without needing to borrow it from external sources. Now, an essential term that can add more value to your answer is free cash flow. Let's see what it is. The free cash flow shows how much money the company has with it after it has paid off all the dividends, debt, etc. This is the money that can be directed towards expansion, debt reduction and other strategic moves. And that is the reason it is so important. The next thing that I want to tell you here is, as I always say in all my videos, it is very important to provide complete answers if you want to stand out. And for that, you have to provide more than what all other candidates would do. The extra information that you can add in your answer here is this. Pay attention. The ideal cash flow to net income ratio 
any business aims for is one is to one but it is often difficult to achieve because of various reasons including the difference in the time between the sales and cash collection so as we discussed earlier the liquidity assessment gives an idea if the company has sufficient cash to meet its obligations or not it also tells how well the company manages its cash flow both inflow and outflow any cash shortages and the reasons behind them and in addition to all of this it also allows you to plan your future expenses so you see to add weight to your answer when you talk about all these other little things your answer becomes much more attractive to the interviewers okay so our question number 3 here checks the practical understanding of things that you have the question is in which case is the negative cash flow not a bad news to answer this question you can say negative cash flow is not always a bad news as we otherwise believe sometimes it can be the result of your strategic moves rather than being an indicator of financial trouble for example you may purposely decide to invest more in long term assets with a plan to achieve better returns in the future this investment can cause the negative cash flow temporarily it's a positive sign in the strategy although basically you see it's important to see the things in a right perspective rather than just running after the numbers and that is where the role of a financial analyst comes in fantastic let's move on to question number 4 now what do you deduce from soaring accounts receivable now see the first thing to understand here is any amount that the customers owe to you on account of the purchases they have made from you on credit reflect in accounts receivable so it is the unpaid invoices that we are talking about at the moment okay it is a current asset account on the balance sheet because the customers are legally bound to pay this debt a good measure to understand how effectively a company collects its money converting credit sales into actual cash is accounts receivable turnover ratio the higher the ratio the better is the company at collecting the payments now there are two ways to look at this accounts receivable the positive view is okay the company is expecting so much of cash soon the negative view is if the receivables are too high in comparison to cash on hand it shows company's inefficiency in collecting its payments which can bring it into liquidity challenges and these liquidity challenges can soon impact its operations also a very high value of accounts receivable might mean that the company is making a lot of sales to riskier customers who may never pay back or may pay partially so as a financial analyst it becomes very important for you to delve deeper into the reasons for high accounts receivable check the doubtful accounts the market conditions credit policy type of customers the sales are being made to etc now as soon as we talk about accounts receivable another important term that comes into picture is ar factoring and your next question could be what is ar factoring to answer this question you can say when a company comes to believe that it is difficult for it to collect its outstanding money from the customers itself and it is putting pressure on its operations it may decide to sell these outstanding invoices at a discounted rate to a third party this third party is called a factor the factor pays some advance cash from the outstanding amount to the company and after it has recovered the remaining money it deducts its fees and pays the remaining amount to the company this whole process of selling these accounts receivables at a discounted rate is called ar factoring the advantages of ar factoring are it gives immediate access to cash the company gets immediate access to the cash which it may need for its operations expansion and other growth opportunities then as the company can now focus on its core operations rather than the collection it helps the business it especially helps the companies observing seasonal increase in sales or a quick growth in such cases they may find it difficult to manage everything alone so they hire a factor however the companies have to make a very careful decision here because 
if the factor uses any unfair or illegal methods to collect the money from the customers the company's brand name gets a hit discounted invoices further mean that you lose upon your own money so these are the two big disadvantages of ar factoring and that is what the companies have to pay attention to before making this decision question number 6 what is the difference between liquidity and solvency now see these are two concepts which indicate a company's financial health liquidity means a company's ability to meet its short term obligations like paying off its bills short term debts operating cost and any other unforeseen expenses within the next one year solvency on the other hand means its ability to meet its obligations in the long term and remain financially stable okay great now let's move on to one of the most important questions asked at almost all the financial analyst interviews and it is why is ebitda important what is a positive ebitda but a negative net income indicate to you so first of all let us see what is ebitda ebitda means earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization it is a widely used uh, financial metric in asset intensive industries that have a lot of property and equipment and corresponding high non cash depreciation early stage technology companies also like to capitalize on ebitda to discuss their performance this is because they can amortize their expenses on research and development and other ipr this shows their performance in a good light it may also be used to take the attention of the investors of the challenges that the company might be facing on account of heavy borrowing rising capital expenses and development costs etc now a condition where you have positive ebitda but a negative net income may sound puzzling but if you just try to recollect what do itda mean in ebitda you would realize that this condition indicates five important things the first one is probably there are high interest expenses on loans or bonds then there might be high taxes that they are paying significantly high non cash expenses that they are making probably there is a loss in investments and other non core activities and finally probably there are some unusual expenses which may be one time expenses also okay so if you try to think like this you would see that answering the questions becomes much more easier and you are able to see the practical side of the things okay let's move on to question number 8 now and our question number 8 is what does a very high current ratio suggest to you about a company and what does a quick ratio of value greater than 1 suggest to you now see these are two liquidity ratios that reflect a company's ability to meet its short term obligations basically how quickly can it convert its assets into cash to pay its liabilities off current ratio here is equal to current assets divided by current liabilities current assets here include things like cash accounts receivables inventory etc and current liabilities include short term debt accounts payable other short term obligations etc so as you can see from the equation here a value of current ratio higher than 1 suggests that the value of current assets that is the numerator is higher than the value of current liabilities which means that the company has enough assets to pay its liabilities off however if this value is too high it suggests that the company is not using its current assets effectively to generate the revenue probably it is missing out on potential growth opportunities okay now coming to quick ratio which is also called as asset test ratio so the formula says quick ratio is equal to quick assets divided by current liabilities quick assets here mean current assets minus inventory this ratio is important because sometimes it becomes difficult to liquidate the inventory and the value of this ratio indicates how easily can a company pay its liabilities off without having to liquidate its inventory a value of greater than 1 suggests that the company can swiftly settle its current liabilities off without getting into the hassle of liquidating the inventory 
very very important pay attention if you need to you can replay this part of the video moving on to our question number 9 now is a very high roe of a company a good sign what would you suggest as a financial analyst in this case now see roe which stands for return on equity is a metric that measures how efficiently a company generates profits with respect to its shareholders equity the formula to calculate roe is net income divided by shareholders equity if the roe of the company is above the industry average it makes the company lucrative for the potential investors because it indicates to them that the management of the company is adept at using the shareholders equity effectively to run the business and generate handsome profits however a very high roe should immediately caution you because it might have been caused by manipulations and must raise red flags for the financial analysts it is important to delve deeper into the details in such cases how let's find out now see we know that equity is equal to assets minus liabilities so if a company increases its liabilities by taking a lot of debt financing it can artificially boost the roe without having to increase the net income and profit if it uses this borrowed finance to buy its shares back it can further inflate the roe so the basic suggestion is if something looks too good to be true investigate don't just jump at it now after this question on roe the next much expected question that you might face could be what do you know about dupont analysis to answer this question you can say dupont analysis is also called the dupont model or dupont identity it is a powerful tool in financial analysis that breaks down the roe into three main components allowing a more in depth study these three components are profitability efficiency and financial leverage let's see them one by one okay let's see profitability first it is also called as net profit margin and is denoted by net income divided by the total revenue it indicates how much profit a company makes for each unit of revenue a higher profitability indicates better cost management and efficient operations management which pushes its profitability higher such companies often have competitive advantages in pricing and controlling the cost the second one here is efficiency also called as total asset turnover to calculate this efficiency you divide the total revenue by average total assets it measures the sales generated for each dollar of assets that the company possesses basically how efficiently a company utilizes its assets to generate the revenue higher efficiency suggests effective inventory and operations management okay and now coming on to financial leverage or equity multiplier this metric measures the proportion of assets of a company financed by debt compared to equity a higher equity multiplier shows that the company relies more on debt finance this may increase its roe but increases financial risk also due to higher interest payments and potential volatility if you want to calculate roe using the dupont formula it is simply profitability multiplied by efficiency multiplied by equity multiplier dupont analysis basically allows you to pinpoint the reason for high or low roe okay okay and now coming to the final question of this video question number 11 what does a high pe ratio indicate to you as a financial analyst now to answer this question you can say well pe ratio is another vital ratio used by the investors to decide if they want to invest in a particular company or not depending upon their strategy so first of all let us see what is pe ratio pe ratio is also called as price to earning ratio mathematically it can be shown as market price per share divided by earnings per share which basically means how much are the investors willing to pay for each unit the company earns a high pe ratio is definitely something every company would aim for as it shows that investors are willing to pay well for every dollar or rupee 
the company earns it shows that the market has high expectations from this company but the financial analysts need to probe it deeper because it can also mean overvaluation of a particular stock with the market expectations may not align with the actual performance now if you try to dig deeper you may come across many more reasons for this temporarily elevated pe ratio for example one time surge in sales due to some market conditions can elevate the pe ratio then the bullish market may also record a high pe ratio because the optimism is high in the market as a financial analyst it is important to take into consideration the industry historical pe ratios and future growth prospects before jumping to a conclusion so with this we come to the end of this video very soon we'll get you a video on some very important situational questions also that you may face during the interview to ensure that you don't miss out on it subscribe the channel now if you have found today's video useful do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends also i'll see you very soon with a new video till then bye bye and take care